Hello and welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to continue our conversation on Race Studio Analysis 3 and really start to look at customizing your own personal view. Now it's fair to say in every tutorial as part of this series up until this point we've looked at every element of the software in singular uh, form, time distance or split times report or channels report. But what we're going to do today is we're going to start customizing that view for you and for me so we can start adding those together for our own unique and personalized experience. And that's the beauty of this software. You can really change it around to make it specific to you. Now to help with that process, I'm going to focus on two things and make this video relevant to everyone. The first is I'm only going to use GPS data so that every single AIM user can actually use this um, view and this process and this tutorial. And then the second thing is, is by using GPS data, I can actually share this profile with all of you, potentially to kickstart your uh, approach of being able to customize your own view and being able to get this data into format that works for you. So without further ado, let's get into Race Studio 3 analysis. Now, um, I'm going to use GPS only. We can tell that because I'm using this file down here gathered by an AIM Solo 2 only. So there's no additional channels, just GPS. And I'm going to open up this file and we're going to start looking at the information. Now this is going to show us where we left off after our last view and that was bringing in some of these math channels and you can see here is where we've got um, GPS break on and GPS throttle and this is this is or these are math channels that are mimicking driver inputs uh, to be able to demonstrate um, when the driver is braking, when the driver is accelerating and so forth. What we want to be able to do though is we want to be able to bring in um, additional components into this view. Now we've got two options here. The first is that we can actually start adding to this particular view here. Uh, in all fairness we actually have two components on this screen right now. We have a track map that shows everything on the track in terms of the whole view of the track and we also have the time distance but what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to show even more and the question is, is do we customize this or do we create a new tab? Now, I personally would like to create a new tab. And since launch of the software, AIM have created a new button that allows us to be able to do that. So at the top here, you can see that there is this button here. It's a blank page with a plus on it. And if you click, it's going to say add custom. So uh, you can see that I've got a few here that I've created, but I'm going to click on add custom. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I would like to see a custom view demonstration or GPS demo. Um, and I'm going to click on OK. And it's going to take me to a new tab here. I can actually save this just to make sure I save the process as we go through. Remember, anything you do in the software needs to be saved to make sure that we're keeping um, uh, up to date with everything that we've changed. We don't lose that work. And right now it's just showing us the time distance and it's only showing us one particular channel. So the first thing we need to do is be able to customize our channels report. So um, I beg your pardon, customize our time distance using our channels report uh, that is here. So um, as we scroll through, we want to be able to bring in what we had last time. And so you can see that I have um, right now GPS speed, but we want to be able to see um, information such as uh, we want the GPS longitudinal data, which is here. We want to be able to see when the brake is on, which is here. And we want to be able to see when the throttle position is on, which is here. Now, if you're wondering how we've done many of these channels, don't worry if you go back through the previous tutorials and they are available in a playlist, so you can see them one by one by one, you can keep up with what's going on. And if I reference anything particularly, I may put a link in the top right hand side of the video so that you can actually go back and check that tutorial out. Now what it's done here is it's actually uh, overlaid each of these channels on top of each other. So we just want to be able to sort that quickly by changing it. Now, if you remember from the time distance view that these buttons up here allow you to change your view. And so there we go. We've now changed it. So we've got a view which shows us longitudinal when the brake is on, when the throttle is on. Now we can also change that a little bit because this is actually uh, a little bit uh, hard to read. And so what I can do here is change that to be a, a bit of a thicker view in terms of the, the uh, thickness of the line. Um, and just to make sure we've got it set up correctly, I'm just going to pick another lap for comparison and I'm going to click this one here. And so now we've also got the time compare bar that comes at the bottom. So for all intents and purposes, this is almost identical to this one, but we want to go a bit further. So the next thing we want to be able to do is add in some additional components onto this singular view. So what I can do is I can right click. Now right click is definitely a feature which we need to get more comfortable with as we navigate through the new software. But in doing so, it gives us the option of being able to change things. 
So I've right clicked there and I've got the option of being able to choose a panel which would change this time distance to anything I've chosen. I could remove it, which I don't want to do. It would just be a blank page at that point. Um, or I can add a panel and I can add a panel at any point in terms of a reference. So it could be the left of this page, right of this page, top or the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select bottom and now I get this sort of opportunity to be able to add something here. But uh, I want to be able to add more. So let's add another one of those. So I'm going to right click down here. I'm going to click add panel and I'm going to click to the right. And so that gives me another view that is here. And then lastly, I want to be able to bring in um, uh, one last view, which may be um, you know, something which I can use uh, such as a track map. So I can actually click in this bit and I'm going to click right here and I'm going to click on the bottom. And so now I've got the opportunity of being able to bring in additional information that allows me to customize it. So I'm going to bring in three things. I'm going to bring in um, a friction circle, which I'm going to have to build, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to bring in the channels report to be able to show me a little bit of information about each of the laps. And I'm also going to bring in a map. And I'm not just going to bring in a map that looks like this. I'm not going to bring in this map. I'm actually going to bring in a map that allows us to be able to see what's happening um, with the individual sector that we're in. And I'll show you how that works as well. So let's get those put into the system. So what we're going to do is over here, I want the channels report. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click on channels report and I'm going to click on OK. Now it's empty right now. There are no channels in there. We're going to add those. Here I'm going to select scatter. Um, so I'm going to click that. Now don't worry. What that's doing right now um, is showing a lot of information, but we're going to clean that up. Don't worry about that in terms of looking through that. And it will all make sense as we go through. And then the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to add the map. And so as I scroll down here, I'm going to click either track map. And if I click there, you're going to see the map that looks just like this map. But if I right click on it again and I click on choose panel, I'm going to scroll down and I want to be able to click on track map for selected split. So I click there, it's going to focus on the split um, that I'm analyzing overall, which is a nice way of being able to zoom in if we want to be able to see um, uh, sort of position on track. Now, there are some of those options which aren't available. They might be associated with data and inputs that you don't have from GPS only. So, for example, if you want to be able to look at movies, you also have to have a SmartyCam file. We don't have that, so we can't use that particular sort of uh, block as part of this view. So right now, this is sort of like our blank canvas, so we want to be able to save as we go. So we're going to click on um, this cog icon here and click on Save Profile. So that's saved our view. We now have a way of being able to customize a lot of information, but we want to make it relevant to us. So we're going to work on each of these to make them look um, how we want to be able to analyze. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is the um, channels report. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click, and if you remember, any of these that I'm going through, I'm going to go fast. But don't worry, there is a tutorial for each of these, so you can go in and look at that later on and learn how to be able to use each of those features. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some information which helps me understand performance by lap. Now, before I do this, one of the things I was going to mention is that in the previous tutorial, we talked about the pre-built math channels that uh, were made by AIM. So one of the things you may notice is that I have now enabled all of them. So instead of just having GPS brake on and throttle position, I've enabled all the coasting or the cornering or the braking uh, math channels as well. That will help me put these into an analysis going forward. It doesn't do any damage by turning them all on. It doesn't do necessarily too much in terms of increasing file size. It just makes it easier to be able to find these sessions. The only downside is it does make your list of channels a little bit uh, bigger. And if you're dealing with lots and lots of channels, it means finding information might take a little bit longer, but uh, um, for the most part, no real issue. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start populating some of these channels into the channels report. So first thing I want to be able to see is how long was I on the break in terms of uh, seconds um, in the lap. The more I was on the break, the more I was slowing down versus you know accelerating. So let's have a look at that. So I can scroll down here and right in front of me, I have these three options. So D equals distance, P equals percentage and T equals time. So how long was I on the break um, in this lap? So if I click there and I click on maximum, what you'll see is that now I have the option of being able to see that math channel for aim and the number of seconds per lap that I was on the brakes. The more I was on the brakes, the more I was slowing down versus the more I was on the throttle, the more I was sort of accelerating. So an interesting view. The next, however, I want to be able to see is how much time was I coasting? And we all know that coasting is something that we want to avoid if we can, if we can. We either want to be on the accelerator or we want to be on the brake. And so how much time was I coasting? So let's have a look at that. So if we scroll down, we need to find CST for coasting. Again, let's click on uh, the lap time. Let's click on um, maximum. 
and we can see um, the information here associated with how much time I was coasting. Lastly, I want to be able to see just some simple stuff like what was my maximum speed, what was my minimum speed per lap, because oftentimes fastest lap time, fastest maximum speed doesn't always correlate to fastest lap time. And so we want to be able to see that too. So I can just type in here or I can type in speed if I want to speed up. Sorry about the pun. Um, the uh, time it takes me to find those channels. And there we are. Now, some of them have disappeared off the page. So this is the other part of customization. You can move things around. So if I move this a little bit over there, it creates more space here and it opens up so I can see the view. All I need to do then is click on save profile and it saved that view for me. So again, it's starting to customize that view. So now I've got um, information such as I can see um, where we are on track in terms of there. We can see that in relation to the performance by lap. We can actually see lap time um, and uh, the uh, line taken by hovering over here. But there's one thing that we haven't finished off yet. We haven't finished off the view in relation to the friction circle. And, and friction circle is always very nice to be able to see consistency. And we want to be able to build that in this particular view. So that's what we're going to do next. Now, this is a very important component that I recommend you all start figuring out and clicking around and playing with. And that is, you can either have all of these channels associated here with this, and they're now associated with the scatter as well. So you can see that TPS on, brake on, longitude and acceleration and speed represent these and these. But sometimes you don't want them to be the same. You want them to be slightly different. And so you need to tell the system that you want that to happen. So if I click up here on the uh, little sort of spanner or wrench, depending on where you're watching this from, I have these list of settings for each of the tabs that are open. These tabs here, um, sorry, these boxes here represent these boxes here. So this is the scatter. These are the scatter settings. This is the channel report. These are the channel report settings. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the scatter report and I'm going to scroll down. Now, one of the things that's really important here is this setting here. Choose which channels to display. You can either use channels that are in common with other panels, or you can do it to change to allow different channels. This means that you can have different channels in the scatter plot and different channels in the time distance. If I click on OK at that basis, it goes blank. But don't worry about it. That's because we're just about to change and work with that going forward. So if I then scroll down and say, OK, I've got this GPS longitude and acceleration. Again, this is where the right click is your friend. And if you right click on it, you can now say show in the scatter plot. And so right now we've got that sort of displayed in terms of longitude and longitudinal forwards, backwards, which means we want latitudinal for friction circles left and right. So what we need to do then is right click. Again, how useful is the right click um, to be able to click on choose channel for the X axis. And all I'm going to do here is scroll down and find GPS latitudinal, which is here. I'm going to click on OK. And so there's the trusty friction circle that we all like to be able to have a look at. And so here, very straightforward in terms of a view, uh, relatively consistent in right hand turns, left hand turns, a little bit all over the place. And so as there's only one left hand turn associated with the Silverstone National, which is Brooklyn's, we can actually start to dig in and have a look at that data, which we might want to do in terms of line and consistency. In fact, if I double click on this one here just to show you, and then I hover over here and look at line, just look how varied that line is going through there. So maybe that's an area of consistency that we want to be able to clean up to do a better job through that particular corner. Now, finally, all we need to do then is click on save the profile and that's it. Your profile is created and this is going to be available for you anytime you need to be able to use it to be able to look at GPS data. Now, as said to you, I will share this with all of you. It will be in the description box below so you can download it. But I will give you a word of, of sort of advice as you do so. The first is to watch the um, tutorial that focuses on making sure that you've got math channels enabled. And what I've done here is enabled all math channels. So you want to be able to mirror those math channels with this profile. And then the second thing is to be able to make sure on your track you've got your split set up appropriately. Again, I'll put the link to the, uh, to the tutorial to be able to help with that as well, because that will mean that all the splits for the map, all of the splits looking at the detail across you know, the, uh, the actual view uh, of the time distance actually make more sense. And with that, what I'm going to do is say thanks so much for watching this tutorial. Hope you really liked it. If you want to add a comment in the box below as to what you liked or what you changed or how you're getting on with customizing your view, do let me know. Make sure you investigate the cogs, the spanners, the right click to be able to really customize that view. There's no harm in clicking everywhere to be able to find out how to customize that view. And with that, I'll say thanks so much for watching and subscribe for more videos.